We all can't just rush right out and buy the latest and greatest of everything that we see. So crafters get crafty. How do you improvise a postage stamp project that you really want to do with your own twist, but you don't have the dies? Let me show you what I did. So using this sheet of postage stamps as inspiration, I liked that if you just look at a block of four, that there are two kittens on a cream background that are diagonal from one another. And then on the opposite diagonal, there are two puppies with a red background. And that was what I wanted to create for the front of my card, a set of four postage stamps. So what do you do if you don't have a postage stamp die? Well, I've got a couple of options for you. My first option is to use my Cricut. So I am selecting a square image and I'm going to unlock that so I can change the dimensions and I'm going to make that a rectangle. So the dimensions are going to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches because that's what I want my card base to be. And I need my postage stamps to fit on the face of my card base. Okay, so I've grabbed another square and I'm going to change the color. It doesn't matter what color. It's just going to denote the layer. And I have unlocked the image and I'm going to change that to four by five and a quarter inches. This is just so that I can visually see exactly how much space I'm going to have on my card front. Okay, one last time, I'm going to go over and grab one more square, unlock it, and change the dimensions to 3.75 inches by 5. Now this is going to be the actual size where my postage stamps are going to sit. All right, now it's time to find us a postage stamp image. I'm going to go over to images and I'm going to put postage stamp in the search block. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of choice here, but I want something that's free. So just check free. And you can just scroll through to see if there's anything that looks good to you. And the top image actually looks like the postage stamp edit for the postage stamp edge that I was looking for. So I'm gonna select that and bring it over. Once you have your postage stamp image open, you'll see on the right hand side that there are two little eyes next to the Singapore part. Just click on the one eye and it will hide the image from the postage stamp because all we want is the exterior edge. I'm going to drop and drag that right over to my card base and right click it to duplicate the image. Now at this point, I do not know if all four postage stamps at that size is going to work. And here I discover it's too large. So I need to edit my size just a little bit. So just make sure that you have selected one of your postage stamps. You go up and unlock it if it's locked and change your dimensions. By selecting each rectangle, I have changed them all to 1.81 wide by 2.5 long. The beauty of the Cricut is you can make your shape any size you want. So um, don't be limited by my measurements. Use whatever, if you like five by seven cards, adjust it to that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on make it and it's going to connect to my machine, which is across the room, so I connect via Bluetooth. And we're gonna give it just a second. Here we go. I use a mat, so, and then on the left side, I'm just gonna cut out the white poster stamp. So I changed my paper size to eight and a half by 11, and I'm gonna go ahead and click go. Now it is here where I realize that I want to have multiple postage stamps um, because I have a couple cards in mind. 
and I go back and I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate those same images so I can cut out eight at one time. Again, go to the mat, change my paper size, and go ahead and click go at this point. So I'll have eight postage stamps. Okay, so it's finally connected and it's going to bring up my set base material, which I have bookmarked or saved um, as medium cardstock, 80 pound. I like that pressure for my particular machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and press go on my Cricut and let it cut it out. So I know what you're saying. Wendy, I don't have a Cricut and I don't have postage stamp size. How else can I make this card? Well, super simple. There's two other ways that I can think of off the top of my head. Use your paper trimmer, cut down your rectangles to size, then use a hole punch and just hole punch your way all the way around to get those little indentations or specialty scissors. Now these are kids specialty scissors. These things are almost 30 years old and they have a scalloped edge on this one. I do have another set. These guys have this crinkly kind of edge. So there's another super simple way. I have no idea what brand these are. Like I said, they're almost 30 years old. I use them when I taught school uh, a million, 10 years ago when the dinosaurs rolled the planet. But um, they're great because they'll do anything. So, see the scallop? All my notes. <laughs> So now, once you have your postage stamps cut out, how do we decorate it? This is where this is totally adaptable. You could stencil, uh, you could ink blend. I am going to use Distress Oxide Sprays, Distress Stain, Mica Stain, um, some of the new Halloween colors. I wanted to kind of get a Halloween vibe, but again, this is totally adaptable to whatever you have on hand, whatever colors you prefer. Um, wow, the sky is really the limit with this one. You could use die cuts on it, you could stamp on it. I'm gonna use die cuts and spray ink. Don't have spray ink, but want that look? Do ink smushing. Really, anything will work here, but wait till you see how this spray came out. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna be working on my silicone mat and I have selected a whole bunch of different spray inks. The first one I'm gonna use is Distress Mica Stain in Empty Tomb. Now I have not used this before. I didn't know how dark it was. Um, you wanna break up that mica at the bottom of the bottle. I do store them upright as Tim Holtz has suggested. And I shake them like a bell. I don't shake vertically because I don't want the mica to get stuck in the little straw. Alrighty, the next color I'm using is also a mica stain. This was in, um, this one's in Fresh Balsam, which is a gorgeous green mica. And um, it's actually a Christmas color. And the next one I'm using is a regular Distress Oxide Spray. Yes, you can mix and match. This one is Carved Pumpkin. And I'm just running my finger through there because I want to break up those little dots. And then I'm just going to start dipping my little postage stamps in because I want to get all of that color onto the cardstock somewhere. And I will dry between them uh, because I want to create layers. And you can build up that color by drying in between. I'm just using my Wow Heat Gun because that's what I have. And uh, I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the postage stamps. And yes, I did break out the tweezers because while well, I was burning my little fingers and um, I have some ink on me, but I didn't want to be covered in ink. So there you have it. I'm going to speed this part way up uh, about eight times, but I did not add water as you might have noticed. I really wanted intense color for the beginning part of my backgrounds 
and uh, then I'll level out with some water a little later on. If you find you don't have enough ink at this point, you can certainly add more. I just wouldn't overdo it because we are going to add water in just a second. My first goal was to give a base layer to all four postage stamps. And that's what we're doing right here, right now. With my base layer complete, now's the time to add some water. So I just used a fine mister way up top to spread that water out. And I'm going to go ahead and, using my tweezers again, dump my postage stamps into the different areas. You'll notice that I didn't really mix my areas. Why? Well, those colors will give you mud. And there's no problem with mud if that's what your look is going for. But mine, I wanted to be able to see those three distinct colors. And I'm really building up this background. Once I have um, the new layer in, you'll see that I start heat drying all of those. Um, and then we'll continue on because we're going to add something else yet. With that layer dry, I'm going to be introducing new colors. This time, a Distress Oxide Spray in Wilted Violet. And you'll notice I am keeping this separate from the rest of the group because I don't want to create mud yet. And I'm also going to be adding another delicious Distress Oxide Spray in Crushed Olive. This color doesn't get enough uh, spotlight as far as I'm concerned. I just think it's gorgeous. And one more mica. This one is Flickering Candle. This is also a Halloween color and it is scrumptious. I'm going to continue to build up that color and add water to this because I want to cover all of that white space and then just go ahead and break it up with my fingers and continue to do the exact same thing. Smush it into the ink, let it dry, get whatever colors. By adding more water, you're going to get more movement on your paper. If you want the splotches, your paper needs to be dry and your ink needs to be not so fluid. But if you want more overall color, then add more water. Remember that it's not going to be perfect and each piece isn't going to be the same and that's perfectly okay. Just add more water or add more color. Here I was losing the purple, so I added another spray of purple and continued on. You can continue to add layers and I mean, Let's be honest, if you really dislike something, just get another piece of paper. But there's generally a way to make it work. And I'm, I'm overjoyed with how these ultimately turned out. They're perfect and they're beautiful. To finish up my postage stamp backgrounds, I'm going to use two different Distress Oxides. I'm going to be using Forest Moss and Villainous Potion, and I'm going to do two postage stamps in each of the two colors. That way, just like I had two kittens and two puppies, I have two orange and, or two, two green and two purple. Leftover ink never goes to waste. I just sop it up with a blank piece of cardstock for a background for another time. All right, let's decorate. We are going to be using a Sizzix die. This one is called Birds. And look at the way that those postage stamps came out. Hoo wee, yummy. All right, so I've cut out two gold bird cages and two silver bird cages along with their little perches. And those are both done in metallic cardstock. And then I cut out two different birds in solid black card. These are small, fiddly die cuts. So I'm going to be using a permanent dry adhesive called Artist Tack, which is a lot of little micro dots to adhere to the back. Now, I will be using my favorite Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue along the way just to ensure that I have a great bond since I do have so much ink on these backgrounds. Your Artist Tack is similar to your Dot Runner. This just has itty bitty little tiny dots on a flat sheet with a release sheet on top 
So whatever part you want the glue on, you just put that face down, put your release sheet over, give it a firm rub, and then lift it off, and it takes those micro dots off of the glue sheet and puts them onto the back of your die cut. It really is quite brilliant. Okay, I've gone back to the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue for my birds because it's gonna be sitting on top of the perch. And I want it to have a really good firm bond. You'll notice that I tap it out with my little finger after I've put it on because I wanna try to eliminate any seepage from the glue back onto my cardstock. For the bird cages, I switch back to using my dots because the bird cage itself has really fine lines and trying to get a liquid glue onto those fine lines is pretty tricky. So I just stick to putting the Precision Art glue on the heavier lines that are there, tap it out with my finger, and go ahead and apply it using an acrylic block to hold down all of those layers so that they dry together. I completed the other two postage stamps with the golden cages and uh, finish those up. Now we're going to mat them to our layer. I do use Precision Art Glue for this one and I'm going to take my cues from the original postage stamps where the kittens were on a diagonal. So my silver cages will be on a diagonal and the gold cages will be on the opposite diagonal. This card came out absolutely splendid. I couldn't be happier. I finished off the inside with some ink blending and leftover die cuts along with a sentiment stamp. If you're interested in checking out my playlist for mixed media, I'll link it up above and I'll see you real soon.